Excellent. Welcome everybody. And today is Tuesday, the 18th of January, 2022. Oh my God, more than halfway past the first month. It's, it's galloping. I, I, I can't believe this, right? So I was thinking, what do I talk about today? Um, half the month is gone. That means we've got technically 11 and a bit months. We can't even say 11 and a half because we're beyond half of January, right? And we know the last two weeks in December, nothing much really happens. But technically after Thanksgiving, we're all like that, right? Getting ready for the holidays and we're all cocooning and getting nice and cozy. So I thought, so let's just say we've got uh, 10 and a half months, give or take, maybe 10 months and three weeks, right? And that got me thinking about purpose. So if you're looking for, um, that's fine, Lindsay. <laughs> She's going to put a face on. Mwah, we love you still. <laughs> um, so if you're thinking of what are we going to talk, call the topic tonight, it's purpose. And I'm going to come from purpose in probably a different way um, than anyone's ever done it. And that's just because that's the way my mind works. I mean, I go down some rabbit holes, but I'm hoping you'll come along with me and we won't get lost. And at the end of it, there'll be something worth your while, right? After all of this. So like always, I like to start with definitions and I like to find various definitions of you know, whatever word I'm looking at. So when I looked at purpose, um, it said the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists, the purpose of the meeting is to appoint a trustee. That's the example that's given here. So if you know the reason for which something is done or created, that got me thinking. If I look at a vacuum cleaner, I know exactly what it does, right? It's, it's obvious. You can tell from looking at the thing what it's meant for. Let's, let's pick something simpler, a kettle. We know what a kettle is used for, right? A microwave might be a bit more complicated because it's not just warming stuff, but you can defrost, you can grill, you can cook. It's got a whole range of functions, right? But baseline anything we look at we know the purpose behind its creation we know why it exists and that got me thinking when people look at us what purpose can they assign to us are we that clear about what we were created for or why we exist that even before we say anything it's speaking volumes to people looking at us so do people take a look at you and say I mean, like when I think of um, Nancy, she's like not just yoga, but I think of holistic care, holistic health. She just oozes that out of every single pore. I mean, I, I, I look at her and I go health and I go holistic health. I, it, so it's not just the yoga. I mean, she has a fabulous physique. I mean, I, I, I don't know how she's done it, but I want to be like that. Like, I, I want to be like her. I, I look at her and I go, wow, is the body even made to bend and form those kind of shapes? But she does it with such finesse, such poise. You kind of like think it's in her DNA, right? So when you see certain people, their purpose is so strong, you can say what they're about, why they exist, why they were created. So that was the first definition. The second definition was a person's sense of resolve or determination. So if you have a new sense of purpose in your step, as you walk out your door tomorrow, can people see that, right? But the two words I wanted to pick out of that definition were resolve and determination. Because that purpose has to be so ingrained in you that it's not wishy-washy. It's not likely to change if the sun doesn't shine tomorrow or if it rains all day tomorrow, then suddenly it's no longer a vacuum cleaner it becomes a kettle. No, the vacuum cleaner is a vacuum cleaner is a vacuum cleaner, whether the sun's out, whether it's winter, springtime, whether it's harvest, it, whatever it is, it's still a vacuum cleaner, right? And the purpose for which it was created doesn't change. And that's because in its makeup, it's, there's a resolution to the vacuum cleaner. There's a determination. I mean, when you put it on, it makes that sound, vroom, you know, it just wants to woof up everything in its path, right? It can't change. It can't suddenly become soft and, and malleable and flexible. No, the vacuum cleaner clean, is, is what it is, right? The kettle tomorrow is not going to say, oh, I've got a heat element and I can be hooked up to electricity so I can become a microwave. No, whether or not the sun comes up, that kettle is going to be a kettle springtime, winter, 
you know, autumn, you name it, it's still a kettle, right? So that got me thinking about the two words resolve and determination. And I don't know if you've ever heard a vacuum cleaner, when it hits an obstacle, the noise changes. It kind of like starts growling, almost like a dog. It's like, okay, what is this thing in my way? It Suddenly the noise gets deeper and more guttural. And you're kind of like thinking, uh, vacuum cleaner, what's wrong with you, right? But that tells you there's something in its way. Now that's the vacuum cleaner being determined in its purpose, right? So similarly for us, how determined are we about our purpose? What's our resolve? If the sun doesn't come out tomorrow, if we forget hailstones or a snowstorm, do we change the reason why we exist or the reason why we're created or the reason why we're here, right? So that's kind of like part A of the talk today, just thinking about purpose. Part B was, I was gonna talk about the different kinds of purpose. Because I think we say purpose and it's just that blanket word and we use it for everything. But I wanna break that down. And I wanna, I wanna say that there are probably different types of purpose. So one purpose is something you inherit, an inherited purpose, right? So say for example, you know, man set up a company, he's a cobbler, a shoemaker, you know, probably churches in England, if you want, you know, or Nordstrom's rack, you know, in the US, had a store, sold shoes, you know, really knows his stuff. You know, you can go there if you want to get your shoes widened, you know, he's got the tools for it. If you want to get, get it polished, he, you know, he'll tell you what the right polish is for the kind of leather you have. I mean, shoes are his business, right? He lived and breathed shoes, anything shoes he knew about, right? And then the guy passes on and he wants to hand over the business to his son or daughter. Now that son or daughter is inheriting that business, right? So even though their father, his purpose was, I'm going to be the best shoe, whoever, shoe store, cobbler, shoemaker, whatever it is, I'm just going to be an aficionado for shoes, right? And that was his calling. And he loved it. He thrived. He left a, a great business. I mean, all the kids went to school on that. The mortgage was paid, you know, via that business. It was always put on the table. I mean, all that kind of stuff, right? Now, the son or daughter that inherits the business, they can do one of two things. They can protect that purpose or they can neglect it, right? So even though it's an inherited purpose, they still have a choice. Now, if that purpose doesn't resonate with that son or daughter, I can tell you right now, they're gonna neglect that purpose. And that business is gonna go under before you can say boo. But if they choose to protect it, they take it on and that legacy, they want obviously to continue so they can pass it on to their children, right? So that is inherited purpose. So it didn't come from you. It was just passed down through the generations. And because you were next in line, it fell in your laps, right? So it's not something you dreamt about. You didn't do also suggestion about it. It, it, it just, you know, it, you were next in line and therefore it fell to you. You were next in line. I mean, it was, it was your lot. You, you didn't have a choice about it, right? But even when you get it, you still have a choice on what you do with that purpose, right? So is that the reason why you exist? Is that gonna be the reason why you were created? Maybe not. Would you have resolve and determination as you've inherited this purpose? Maybe not. So the choice is, do you protect that legacy, that inherited purpose, or do you neglect it, right? So that's one kind of purpose. I don't know for how many of us here on this platform inherited purposes. It's possible that there are a few of us here that have done that, where we've just gone into the family business because it's always been in the family, right? The second thing I'm gonna talk about is multifaceted purpose. So I'm gonna go back to the example of the microwave. I'm trying to connect the dots here, so please follow me. I might be speaking fast and not connecting everything, but I'm hoping you're with me. The microwave when it was made was probably made to, okay, this can warm up food. But with every iteration, every new version, every new model, they've added convection oven type facilities to it. So now you can grill, you can cook, you can defrost, you can keep it warm. I mean, also you can bake, I mean, all sorts of things. I mean, microwaves now are super duper little gadgets that don't take up that much room, but they can do almost every other thing that you had six or seven other gadgets for, and they're smaller in size. And if something happens to it, God forbid, you can chuck it out and get a new one for next to nothing. I mean, they're just so versatile and, and oh my God, they're the best thing ever, I, I, I live. My, if my microwave goes bad, oh my God, the sky is falling out. You don't understand. I, 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 I live on my microwave, right? 
So that's a multifaceted purpose where it's not just made for one thing. But guess what? That microwave is still <laughs> absolutely resolved in its mission, in its purpose, and it's determined. Because guess what? When the time you set it for is done, I don't know if you're like me, but that beep, beep, beep at the end drives me dilly. But guess what? It will keep beeping until you stop the program or you open the door. That is determination at its height. That thing doesn't stop, doesn't give up. It says, you know what? You put me here to do something. I've done it. I've delivered it. Done. My purpose, check. Now you need to come and do your part. And it will beep until you answer it. Now, I, that thing annoys I mean, Trust me, I talk to my microwave. I go, I'm coming already, right? But it's multifaceted. The same thing happens if you bake, if you broil, if you grill, it goes off, it pings. And if you don't listen, it carries on pinging, right? So it is resolved in whatever purpose, whether it's a bake function, the defrost function, that thing is geared and it's like, I am going to deliver, come what me. And when it's done, it lets you know it's done, right? So that's something that has multiple purposes, but still has that resolve and that determination, right? So once again, I come back to us. For some of us, we might have multifaceted purposes. So we might be wives, mothers, business owners. You're still the same one person, but you've got multiple purposes. Now, how resolved and how determined are you in each of those purposes? And now whatever the business is, even your business could have different purposes. So if I use Nancy and Nancy, I apologize in absentia, I am using your name. Oh my goodness. But I know I, you love me and I love you right back. So you will forgive me for using you as an example. But when I think of Nancy, I think holistic care, full round health, right? So she has a yoga thing. That's probably the core. That's how I knew her. So yoga was a thing. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, she's a synonym for yoga. I, I, Nancy, I'm sure if I check the meaning of the name Nancy, there must be yoga somewhere in the description because I, 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 I just don't know otherwise. She just, she does it so well, right? So I met her doing yoga, but now she's gone on to do a coaching thing and she's doing something. And I just see this woman as holistic health, right? So she's a mother, but now she's a business woman, right? But her business has different prongs to the business. That makes her purpose now here on earth multifaceted, right? And she is pursuing every single one of those purposes with gusto. She's not saying I'm going to be the best mom I can be, and then I'm going to drop the ball on my business. No. The same energy she's putting into being a mother, she's probably putting more into growing her business because she's kind of like thinking, God forbid, if anything happens or I move on, I can leave the business to my kids, right? So she's doing that because she wants to leave a legacy. So she, her resolve and her determination doesn't waver from one purpose to the other. So once again, I pose the question to us, do we know how many multiple facets we have in terms of purpose? Because for some of us on our goals for the year, we may be concentrating on just the one purpose. Meanwhile, as one person, you might have two or three different purposes or four or more. But are you making sure you're not dropping the ball on any of the others? So it's really key to keep all of those within your line of sight, right? So on your vision board, what's your purpose as a mother? What's your purpose as a wife? What's your purpose as a businesswoman? What's your purpose as whatever else it is, right? So have a goal or a vision board or sub vision, whatever it is, but have a page so you can keep track of all of those purposes, right? because you're not just one thing, you're multifaceted, right? And then the last thing I was gonna talk about in terms of purpose is transformative. So for some of us, our purposes are not, this is why I was created. So that's, you know, just everybody has an innate ability, whatever, that it's not that. For some of us, we haven't inherited this purpose. For some of us, we might know we're multifaceted, but this one kind of like stretches us a bit further than where we are in the sense that transformative means this is who I am now, but this is who I want to be. And to get from here to here, there's that gap between the two. And somehow I have to bridge that gap. So I'm gonna use an example. 
Um, right now, I'm a UK size 12, maybe a US 8, 10, right? And I want to be a US probably 6, 8, so a UK 10 at most because, you know, I'm kind of like closer to the ground than other people. So I kind of like, you know, have to be proportioned and all of that. So I'm thinking that, right? But this is where I am now. And this is where I want to be. And there's stuff I need to do in between the two points, right? And what does that take? To get that purpose. So why do I want to be like that? What's the purpose for wanting to be the six to eight or the whatever it is I want to be? What's the purpose for that? Because I know in the new role I'm going to, I'm going to need to be probably up and about a lot more often than I am now. So there's going to be a lot more travel is what I mean by that, right? I'm probably going to be working longer hours. I can almost guarantee that, right? Because they're going to want to take their pound of flesh. Let's just, let's just agree that out the gates. Because once you accept that, life is bliss, right? You don't have to guess. You're not surprised when that happens, right? And then for my overall health and well-being, I just know that I perform better. I'm more alert. I've got more energy when I'm that side. So those are the reasons. Those are the purposes behind wanting to get there. But from where I am now, I need to transform myself from the current me to the future me. But I can already see the future me in my mind. So it exists. And I've been there before, so I know I can do that. And even if I hadn't been there before, through auto-suggestion, I can tell myself, this is a purpose. This is what, this is the vision. This is what I want to look like. But this is where I am now. What do I need to do to get from here to here? Because I'm transforming myself. So this is going to be a new, improved version of me. This is a very simple example, but I'm just hoping that it's delivering the message, right? And two things that I know right out the gate I need to do is my diet and my physical activity. So everything that goes through here, I need to monitor. Now, I'm not a calorie counter. I, I, that does not work for me, right? But I kind of like know my body now, having lived you know, as many years as I have. I've come to understand my body. So I know what it can break down. I know what's good for it. I know what it responds well to. And I know what diets or what eating plan work to get me to this transformative purpose, right? And so I have to put that meal plan together. And then physical activity. I know when my body's in the, in the zone of burning those extra calories in all the wrong places, you know, you get, we kind of like dress to hide the liabilities and show off the assets. That's what I say anyway, that, that's how I dress. I hide every liability and I show off the assets, right? And because I know I want to transform from here to here, physical activity is going to play a massive role. But it's not just any activity because I can do yoga. I'm not any good at it. Sorry, Nancy. I'm nah, rubbish, absolutely rubbish at that. I don't think my body can bend half the different ways yours can. I don't, I'm not even sure I can ever achieve that, right? I know that I can do probably do Pilates, right? I know I can probably do dance classes like Zumba or whatever, but guess what? I don't respond to any of those things. That's not me, right? But get me on some kind of cardio. Oh my goodness, you've never seen a Dura Duracell bunny go. I go, 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 go until I truly pass out, right? So anything cardio, I respond so well to that. So I know that apart from my eating plan, it's going to be cardio and lots of it. And I know at what heart rate my body's in the zone when it's burning calories. So those are just two steps that I know I'm going to monitor and take to get from where I am today to the transformative me, right? So that's a purpose this year. And I have resolve for that because I've got some numbers in the wardrobe that I want to wear to the new office because I want to look the part. I don't just want to sound the part. I want to look the part, right? So when I walk into the boardroom and I give my first presentation, they all say we made the right choice hiring this woman. I don't want no buyer's remorse. No, no. Because they pay me top dollar, right? So when I go in there, I want to give them that reassurance. That they've made the right decision taking me on. So I want to look the business. I want to sound like I know my stuff. Like I want to go in there and bowl them over, right? So that. So that's another purpose, another reason why I want that transformative look, right? So I, I'm kind of like being open here and I'm telling you exactly what I'm about, right? You might think it's superficial, but all of these things matter, right? All of these things count. It's what we're projecting. So when people see me, I want them in that space, in that professional space, I want them to see competent. I want them to see powerful. I want them to see confident. I want that oozing before I even say a word. 
I want that purpose to speak for me, right? But unless I do that transformative thing, I'm not going to get that. So when I'm thinking of the definition of purpose, when people see me, do they know why I exist? Do they know why I'm here? What, I'm, what am I here to do? Does that speak before I even say a word? And when the going gets tough, because we will hit those curveballs, we'll get those curveballs, we'll get those sharp corners. Where's my resolve and determination? Because I know there are going to be days like today where the temperatures drop now, and all I want to do is sit and wrap myself in my electric blanket on the couch and like munch on a glass of two of, I won't say what, right? And nibble on, you know, all your favorite things, you know, the things that you probably shouldn't be having if you're looking at that eating plan. But there are going to be days like that because between now and when I start next month, let's face it, it's winter, it's cold, right? But that resolve and determination has to kick in at some point and get that purpose top of mind, front. Like, I, I can't get away from it. I, I'm seeing it all the time. i got to work on this. And i got a month to do it, right? And it's not going to take that long because I know what I need to do, right? But that's what's coming up for me. So one, do people, when they see you, know what you're about? Before you introduce yourself, before you say anything, can they like say, oh my God, when I see you, this is what strikes me. And when they say that, does that resonate with who you are? Is that really true of who you are? So your purpose needs to be strong enough to shine through before you say one word about who you are. That's the first thing. Because like I said, when we see a vacuum cleaner or a kettle or a microwave, we don't have to guess what they're there for, what their use is. We, we, there's no guessing game. It, it speaks. You just see the thing on the shelf, in the cupboard, in the whatever, you know what it's about. You know what it's going to deliver. You know what it's going to do, right? Do we come across that precise to people that cross our paths every day? So that's the first definition. Second definition was that resolve and determination. Like I said, that microwave will ping until you respond to it, right? Do we ping, and I use ping in inverted commas, right? Do we keep screaming, this is what I'm about. I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep pressing on. I'm going to keep pushing until I get that done, because that purpose is so strong. It's in your DNA, it's in every cell, you can't get away from it, right? Where's your resolve and determination? And then we went into the kinds of purposes. So be honest, if you've inherited a purpose, that's fine. Is it something you wanna keep alive? Is it a legacy you buy into? Does it resonate with you? If not, then you've got two choices. You can either protect it, or you can neglect it. And there's nothing wrong in any decision you make. If you're the only child, that might be a bit tricky. But I've got five siblings, right? So if there was ever any guessing game to be done, I could hand that over to the next person and say, you know what, guys? This ain't true for me. One of yours can take this. But if you're the only kid, that might be a bit tricky, right? But still, you make the choice. Do you want to protect it or do you want to neglect it? And there's nothing wrong if you say that's not who you are. That's not your identity. You don't buy into that. You can sell off the business and then use the proceeds to do what it is you do want to do. And that leads me to the multifaceted purpose. We're not just one thing. For most, and this is why I say to most employers, when you take somebody on, that employee is not just a number. They're somebody's kid first and foremost, right? Because I mean, they didn't, they didn't fall out of the sky. They came out of somebody, right? I mean, so they've got parents somewhere. They belong to me. They, they, you know, they, they, they got people, right? So that's the first thing. So that employee is not just the number. They're someone's child, someone's son, someone's daughter. And if they're lucky, they've got siblings. So they're someone's brother, someone's sister. And if they're old enough and they're married, they're someone's husband, they're someone's wife. And if they've gone on to have kids, they're someone's father, they're someone's mother. So every employee is not just a number. They're bringing different roles into the workplace, right? So as each individual, we're multifaceted. I mean, I think of John. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a sales machine. I mean, if I think of three roles automatically, those are the first three. And then fourth, and a very close fourth, He's into personal development like I have never known anybody. I mean, the guy studied it, he studies it like it's food for him to live. If he could give up eating and just do the personal development stuff, I'm sure he'll trade food for that because he's been doing this for years. Why? Because I think he has, and I'm going to guess here, I think he has a transformative purpose. 
where he was once like this and he said to himself, I want to be like this. And he mapped out the steps in between there and there and he's been pursuing that ever since. Now, if that is not resolve and determination, I don't know what is. So we've got the examples to emulate. We've seen this work. We see the proof here on this platform. So I'm not saying something that we don't know about, but it's just for us to concentrate our minds, right? So your purpose can either be inherited, it can be multifaceted, or it can be transformative. So as we hone in on those vision boards and our goals for the, re for the year, I mean, we've probably got 10 and a half to 11 months tops, right, to go this year. Let's get that purpose right. Because guess what? If we get that purpose right, where people can see us and they know what we're about, resolve and determination will follow. Because like I said, that vacuum cleaner doesn't change. Someone who made it doesn't follow the vacuum cleaner around in your house, reminding it, guess what? You're a vacuum cleaner. Guess what? You're a va No, 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 no. The vacuum cleaner has it in its DNA. It is a vacuum cleaner. And so even in your home, far removed from the manufacturer, it is still fulfilling its purpose. Because it was made in some factory, maybe in China, maybe in the US, maybe somewhere in Europe. And it's gone into your house. I mean, I live in London. I mean, I'm sure where it was made was eons away from where I live, right? But in my house, it's still fulfilling its purpose. And I'm sure in your house, it's doing the same. And it's not some telepathic whatever. My vacuum cleaner is not speaking to your vacuum cleaner. They, they don't have, you know, uh, support groups. No, they, they, they don't have that. It's in the DNA. The, the purpose is the purpose is the purpose. It's, it's doing what it's doing all over the world, right? And so can we. So regardless of our location, purpose should not matter. As soon as we move from point A to point B, purpose should still be what it is. It doesn't change for seasons, for location, for timing, nothing. It is in the DNA, it carries on regardless, right? And then resolve and determination, how do you ping? Do you ping? Do you even know what your ping is, what your ping sounds like? How do you know that your resolve and your determination is kicking in? Identify those. So you know what you need, because we will get those sharp corners, we'll get those curveballs, but that's when we need to dig in and say, you know what, I'm not giving up, because they will come, they will come. So on that note, I'm going to zip it, and I'm going to open it up to you guys, and I hope I made some sense. I really, I mean, I only fleshed, it out, fleshed this out in the last half hour or so, so I'm really hoping it made sense. I, I, I don't know where I've gone with this, but I'm, I'm just hoping that there's something in it you could take away, and it will help you with your goals and everything else. I, I'm really hoping. So I'm just gonna zip it now and listen to you guys for, for, for a moment. Hi, Evie, it's Linda. Hi, Linda. Um, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, congratulations good again. That's awesome. Yeah, oh. um, this really, really, really resonated with me today. Um, oh, that good. helped me a lot. Cause I never looked at purpose from this part of, and I know you're supposed to, you gotta know who you are, mm. where you're going. Mm know your purpose and I never looked at it as, as different different purposes yeah mm. so that was huge oh excellent and, I'm glad and uh like as far as like spiritual purpose which you really didn't touch on it's someone once said to me that you know we are a spiritual being and our purpose is to create mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. absolutely I agree with that I agree with yeah. that wholeheartedly I mean, I, I think I think I didn't go down that route. I mean, you are right. That is definitely an element of, of purpose, our creativity, because um, we were created, right? And each of us were created for a specific reason. I mean, I, I've said before that there's an environment where I will thrive and you may not necessarily thrive and vice versa. There's somewhere where you will thrive and I will just be floundering like a fish out of water, right? So there's a purpose for each of us in terms of our spiritual purpose, the reason why we're here in the first place. And that is key. That is key. But because I know on the platform, not everybody is like from that angle or from that perspective. I didn't want to like hone in on that, but you're very correct. The spiritual definitely is one, you know. So apart from inherited, there will be a spiritual purpose if you know that, right? Mm -hmm. For some of us, we don't even know that. But how many of us are spiritual people? I know mine, right? Because I always start from there. Because only when I get that right, can I then flow into the other things. And I think I've mentioned before that my name Barnabas means son of encouragement. So I know that is my God-given purpose. So whatever I do, the overarching theme of everything I do is I've got to be an encourager. So whether it's personal development space, whether it's in a commercial space, whether it's in a professional space, that is something I've always done. 
and it's not going to change because every time my name is called, they're actually reminding me of why I'm here in the first place, right? So I do that regardless. So that's kind of like my overarching purpose. But from that purpose, I have the other purposes. And so I will have, I don't have an inherited purpose. I don't know why. My, my, my father didn't have a business. He didn't hand it over. But I have multifaceted purposes, right? Because I'm someone's child. I'm the first of six girls, right? So there's that example setting thing I've got to do there. You know, professionally, I've got purpose there. And then my transformative, you know, is, you know, the, the, the example I gave with the version of me now and the version of me to be. So yeah, definitely spiritual, big one, big, big, big one. For me, it's big anyway. I don't, I don't know for how many people, but it's huge. But thanks, Linda, for bringing that up. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Well, thanks for giving me that other angle. That's excellent. Yeah, <laughs> you all never, never looked at it that way. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it made sense because I wasn't sure I was talking totally. sense. I just, no, it totally made sense. like I said, I just hashed, hashed it together and I was like, oh my God, I hope this comes across well. <laughs> Well, thank you, Linda, for always weighing in. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else want to say something on this? Hey, Missy. Hey, you know, I always got something to say, right? <laughs> so first of all, your, your uh, half hour of flashing out sounds like a PhD dissertation that you oh, just, Lord. as always, no, as always, you are oh, Missy. You're the too daughter kind. of encouragement and insight as well. And encouraging is different. But the insight that you, you know, the whole time I was thinking about myself and picturing, you know, most of my working age life has been spent not well. And so I kind of lost myself along the way, lost my purpose. And now I have a new one. And looking at me, I don't think people would know, it, but I think they know I'm determined. So I think I have mm -hmm. that, got that going for me, as Bill Murray would say in Caddyshack, at least I got that going for me. Uh, and I am working on transforming from that ill person, whatever the stories were that made that, to the well person who is going to be like a locomotive and nothing is going to stop that locomotive. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's something on the track, it's going to get run over. Mm -hmm. um, if I see something and I can avoid it, I will do that. Mm -hmm. So I am working on all of that from different angles. Mm -hmm. And yes, I there's a little bit of I've been working so hard on the business as there's a little neglecting of the, the husband, you know, mm. and um, I think about it and it's, it's not good. It's not good. Um, but there's only so much time in a day yet. I'm fitting in more than I ever fit in in my life. Wow. So that's it's almost like time is doubling itself and then maybe tiredness kicks in. But this discussion is so important and thank God it's recorded posterity and other people are hearing this because we all have to think this way and thanks to some of the girls on here i got that fancy book i think virginia was the first one to mention it about the um what is that the law of attraction uh yeah planner the 12-week planner, planner, planner thing yeah yeah right i'm not sure if i got the right one i still gotta check that with linda oh i see look she's got it too yeah so i i even had to watch a video on it because it seems so complicated mm -hmm. but all these things are going to help and um I just, again, I, I can't thank, I feel like giving you a thank you card every day. Every day. <laughs> I'm going to make a virtual thank you card and just hand it over. Because Aww, thank you. insight into these things, how you could not know that that was so brilliantly presented, I think you have to work on. <laughs> you have to work on. You do. Because uh, to present what you just presented in the manner in which you did, the organized fashion, it's inspiring in itself just to listen to it. It makes me want to be more organized. So God bless you and thank you again. Oh, thank you, Missy. God bless you more. God bless you more. You know how you, when you think in your head and you process things, to you it makes sense. But putting it into words and communicating to somebody else and actually putting people along with you, that's where the test comes in. So in my head, it made sense to me. I mean, I, I knew exactly what I was going to say, but just putting it in a way and packaging it, like letting it flow, that, that's where the struggle was for me. So I wasn't sure that, okay, I know I want to start here and I know I want to end there, but how I've woven the different thoughts together, would they get the gist of what I'm trying to say? You so that, never that's... have a gap. You never have a gap. You have to understand that. What is just fleshed out to you, yeah. this is your gift. And your gift yeah. is just makes its own bridge. So just know that. Okay. Thank you, Missy. I accept that. I appreciate the feedback and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you. Because, yeah, 
like I said, it's just something I think I always need to work on. So thank you. Thank you for saying that. That, that means the world to me. Because going into where I'm going, I'm going to be doing quite a few board presentations. So <laughs> I'm going to need to take people along with me <laughs> and sell the ideas and sell the rationales and recommendations. So absolutely. But thank you. Thank you so much. Does anybody else want to? Ah, Mandy. Yes, Mandy. Yeah. My feet there and it just went click. <laughs> I was thinking about it. <laughs> that's why that's the universe saying speak. Um, yes, it did make a lot of sense. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, so I suppose in my case, obviously the mother and the, and the woman, you're a woman as well as a wife and a and a and a mother, um, and a cat mum. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I suppose when I first joined JLSM, I knew then that I needed I was I'd say I'm the transformative bit I really related to what you were saying there and when I joined JLSM it was like okay so this is where I am now and I can see all these great people on here and and they're just they're just so inspiring and you and Ego and Stuart and um, obviously John and um and Glenn and, and you all spoke to me at that time and you all gave me things um, like Missy's picking up you you gave me things that just so re resonated and helped me to keep transforming. Um, and I think throughout my life, I've had the determination to keep doing that. I want to be the best that I can be. And it's not always knowing how to do that, but I think that the, the teacher does appear when the student's ready. And I think use your, use your intuition, follow it, um, and, and don't necessarily wonder what people think, just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and go for it I think and so I, I don't want to keep going on about it but and I, I don't I want to make it so it comes across because I sometimes you don't want to you, you still I've still got that thing in the back of my head that says you, you shouldn't shine you must not shine out there you must you've got to just be you know be quiet stop mm -hmm. it you know and it's a you know, that I'm, I'm thing that I've got to get away from and I'm I am getting away from it but so but so I'll say it anyway which was so the last course I just did, I had to do it on PST time. Mm -hmm. And it's a determination a lot of people don't want to do because mm -hmm. you have to be, and I've got two more days this week and that's it. It's over and it's really sad. But so it meant that I had to be, um, start at five o'clock in the afternoon and work till six o'clock in the morning. It was 12 hours straight through. Wow. Which meant I also, if it was a three day or four day, I slept the day before as well. Then I did it and then I slept the last day as well to get mm. off of PST time back into to the new thing and I just felt that that was my determination and we just to show that I really wanted to do that and I really needed to do it and and I haven't regretted it except my body clock doesn't know which planet I'm on. <laughs> so whatever time I'm in it's like oh it's only four o'clock in the morning it doesn't really matter <laughs> and I can't put it right until I get these two days out of the way um and they won't but yeah they will be quite as long um so I think that determination was there. And again, I've got to, like you were just saying, I've got it in my head because I'm training tonight and I don't know what I'm, if people haven't seen it, I'm doing a um, just a whistle, whistle stop tour of Amazon reports on the system. Okay. Um, and so I've got to make sure that I can get that across to people and mm. not confuse the hell out of people and just mm. go explain it. Mm. Um, and it is a case of feel the fear, do it anyway, and just, mm do what you just did. It's just making sure you get it out there. So I hope I can be as good as you were today when I do that. <laughs> wow. Mandy, I'm going to start by saying you look fabulous. You look like royalty. I wish I could just take a shot of you and just, oh my God, you you look the part. You look the business. <laughs> like I said, you look the business. I don't know what you've done with your hair. You, you, I, yeah. So that's where I want to start with you. And I think for me, Probably where I saw your transformative purpose kick in was when you started hosting Books for Britain. Yeah. Because yeah. you were nervous as I don't even know what before you put your hand up for that. But guess what? You put your hand up anyway. And I've seen how far you've come as a facilitator, as a presenter. You own that space now. I mean, when you come on, I'm like, that's it. We're down for business. You own that space. And the way you've drawn us out the conversation, I mean, I know I haven't been on there long or as consistent, but you own that space. You've made it your own and that's it. I, I don't think anybody could do it and host it as well as you do. Okay. So tonight, 
I know you're going to blow it right out of the water. People are going to go away saying, wow, Mandy, thank you so much for that. So because you already look the part and that's half the job done. I, I'm sorry. You look the business. So when you start talking, just know that you've got all of us behind you cheering you on saying, you come all this way, you can't drop the ball now. Keep going. Oh, yeah. we're, we're cheering you on. You got this. Yeah. You got this. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that because we, the evidence is there. We can see it. For those of us on the platform who've known you as long as we have, we've seen you blossom. We've seen you come into your own. So I have no doubt that tonight, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, yeah, a, a breeze. You, you'll just, yeah, you'll, you'll sail through it. It'll be fine. So yeah, well done. Thank you. Well done. And, and, and like you, yeah, you do have, you know, multifaceted purposes. And I don't know how you juggle all of them. You know, I don't know how you've done it. Single mom, businesswoman, books for Britain, the PST course, I don't know how you've done it, but clearly your resolve is shining through, your determination is clear for everyone to see. So you've got this, go for it. I, I have no doubts, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm behind you all the way. Thank well you. Done. Really. Well done, well done. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else have anything else to say on this? Or oh, I'm happy to give us some time back. <gasps> Virginia, when did you sneak in? Well, my, um, I've been here so just a couple <laughs> minutes after you started. Okay, cool. You'll see that my picture isn't displayed because yeah. uh, technology just uh, continues to thwart efforts regardless. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've tried everything to try to make it appear. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I've even contacted Zoom and they tell uh, me, you know, unload it, reload it, whatever. I'm over it. Because okay. uh, this is these are these are roadblocks that take up our yep. time. You Absolutely. Know? Stuff starts to work in those. So I just wanted to actually say to Mandy that I so wish I could attend your session today, but don't you know this is I'm going to be out at a doctor's appointment for um I'm actually this is interesting. I'm going to be participating in Pfizer, you know, the pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. research uh, that they're doing on on um i gotta say it right on that in, uh, on that virus that kids get what is it called not sars oh i've just lost the the name of the of the research clinical trial program i'm a part in but i'm going to be researching so i don't know if i'm going to be getting a placebo or if i'm going to be getting the real vaccine but they actually are researching the um the, the drug that um the, that the virus that kids get that is respiratory illness mm -hmm. adults are getting. So that's where I'm gonna be this afternoon. I'm gonna be up, um, getting inoculated and finishing that research. So mm -hmm. who knows, we'll see. But um, Mandy, I so wish I could participate in this. Is it something that is going to be recorded? Um, yes, I am thinking of recording it. I probably will be recording it. Um, and I'll be doing a longer one in about three weeks time, which will go through them in more detail as well than what I've done today. It'll be just a whistle stop today. For the hour but going through them in a high level and then in a couple of weeks time i'll be doing them in a, a deeper level and a bit of analyzing them as well awesome so, thank you I I that. For that. and uh meeting host eva barnabas yeah. the thank you so much this was just excellent um oh, you're welcome. on there you're really welcome. appreciate all that you do for our group and Aww. you're be so busy with your new job does that mean you're going to disappear and we're not going to see you oh no i intend to even if it means i've got to take my lunch break to dial into this i need this to keep me sane so gotcha somehow, we'll, we'll work the diary it'll work all right it'll all right. work okay. so Sounds i'm good. gonna so i'm gonna message you virginia and then we can plan a time because i'm not sure what your day is going to look like after the trial thing but we'll try and sort something out yeah like and if something we can't do today then we'll do tomorrow okay. all right that sounds yeah. great Excellent. Excellent. Thank Does anybody you. else want to weigh in on this? Thank you, Virginia, for weighing in, by the way. <gasps> Lindsay Dollar, Mama. Yes, y'all. Yes. Okay. This was such a great topic. Yes. But the way you broke it down was, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're not going to become a vacuum cleaner. And, you know, that, <laughs> that's just, you know, it makes sense, you know, to just, but, you're right. You have to. I had a point to this. I did. I'm just that was really well put together. And I 
it really resonated with me. So you see, I, I thank you, thank you, Lindsay, first and foremost for that, because I am a very visual person, right? So mm -hmm. when I give examples, it's got to be something that everybody can relate to. I, I, I love the people who speak, you know, up there, you know, where the words, I've got to go look up in the dictionary to know where we're going, where we're coming from. I, and this is me with how many masters or whatever, yeah? I, I can speak on that level if I need to, but when it comes to everyday breaking it down, I like to break things down to that size where if I was woken up in the middle of the night and they asked me, what's your take on this? I could just churn it out like that. And whoever I was speaking to who has never been on this platform will know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Um, so I do very well with pictures. I mean, I, I learn, if you show me how to do something, I can go away and do it the same way. I can replicate it, right? But if you write down the steps and tell me to go away, I mean, me and recipes, you should see me. I, I try to follow recipes. And the first, I don't know how many times I get it wrong. If there are pictures to go with the recipes where at each stage, you can see what it should look like when you've done that. I get it first time, 10 out of 10, right? But if it's just lots of words, something in here just goes, don't want to know, right? So no. I learn, I'm a visual person, right? So when I, when I was thinking, I was like, okay, how, how do I break this down? I'm talking about why do you exist? What were you created for, right? And I'm thinking, I got I to gotta pick things that every household has, right? Something yeah. we've all seen, we all use. And that way, it just brings a point home, right? And I was like, and that's why I said it was just in the last half hour or so that I got the examples because I was like, this stuff is still too high level, still abstract. I need to bring it down like, oh my God, right? Because that's the way I learn. And, and if I speak like that, then it means I understand what I'm talking about. So the examples have to be relatable, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. And so it was the last half hour, I was just going, okay, this is, I know what I want to talk about, but how do I bring it together so it makes sense in my head so that when I talk to somebody else, I can get the point across, right? So that, that's what was coming up. So that, those were the examples I was struggling with. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's for me, if I understand it, then I can teach it to, I don't know how many people, but if I don't get it, it would have been a garbled message. And yeah, mm -hmm. we would probably have been thinking, what's Ivia going on about? Like, are we on the right platform? What's she talking <laughs> about next? So yeah. So thank you, Lindsay. I'm glad that you understood it. It came out clear. It was useful. Yeah. So I'm happy. I'm okay. happy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you're another superwoman I look at. I, I just, you know, wife, mother, daughter, businesswoman, I, I don't know how you do it, but I mean, I'm looking at those two young men growing up under your care and they are just, I mean, they're, they're, they're good looking, well-behaved, well-mannered. Oh my God, so respectful, forever grateful. I'm like, you've done a phenomenal job because it's not easy to raise men, children, I don't yeah. want to say boy children, because what we want them to end up being is men, right? right. But the, the, these men, these young men are coming into their own. And that's because you've given them the tools and the space to thrive. And I know that your hubby is happy because otherwise it would be all over your face. So clearly you're keeping the home, the house and everybody happy. I mean, you got three men, like, I'm not even sure I could handle one, but you got three men to do it, right? And then you're doing business as well. And I'm thinking... This woman is certainly dynamite. I mean, when you go on about, I'm only yay high. I go, but that's why dynamite comes in small packages. You're the right like <laughs> dimensions for it. You're living up to your name, dynamite. So it's all good. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, dynamite does. It, you, have to, you have to. Your kids outgrow you. You have to. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. And that means you've got three bodyguards. Lucky you. Right. That's what I said. I just had to give birth to my bodyguards. That's yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. Right. <laughs> so well done. Well done. I mean, you I respect. I take my hat off. Like huge respects, man. I yeah, I couldn't do it. So I, I'm just amazed. Every time I look at you, I go, wow, what is she made of? That is one woman I look up to in many more ways than one. So yeah. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Okay, does anybody else want to weigh in on this? Otherwise, we can have a good evening. Today is Tuesday. I don't think we have anything else on, uh, but tomorrow we're back for general session. And then I think we've got Adrian Garner, I think, with Life and Business School Tools. He should be back tomorrow. Um, I think Glenn is still away on a cruise. And then we've got Books for Britain, UK at 8 p.m., UK time which will be 3 p.m. Eastern time. 
but it's all in the JLSM calendar. So don't, don't quote me on anything I've said. Click on the calendar. And if you're not part of this conversation, you need to get a subscription because this is where it's at. This, this, it's happening here. You need to, yeah, participate in this, right? So yeah, so that, that's what we have for tomorrow. But I think that's it on the calendar for today. I didn't see anything else. I could be wrong. Um, I don't know that we have any special guests or anything yet. So yeah. So anybody else want to say anything else? Otherwise we can. Uh... Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you to Daisy, who's been quiet. And Edward, my brother, I don't see you very often, but I know you're on here cheering us on and being part of the conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you, Missy. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Ali. And thank you, Catherine, for always showing up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you all tomorrow. Yeah. Cheerio. Yeah.